so I put up my hand halfway through this evening, uh, grilling, grilling a Christian, um, and asked, surely you can't believe in God and be a scientist. This neuroscientist came to Christ after this one question was answered. So make sure to watch till the end because I have a Bible verse that will tie all of this together and you will know how to answer these questions. Let's get into it. At the same time. Mm -hmm. And I was given the answer that actually my journey, my story is that I have a, a background in brain imaging and functional MRI. I did a PhD in that at the University of Cambridge um, and spent 10 years in the field of, of neuroscience. Uh, for the last 15, 20 years, I've been speaking, communicating, writing around um, questions of faith that people have and trying to communicate some of the reasons why belief in uh, God is is credible and, and worth considering. Loved the sciences. I decided as a teenager that I wanted to be a scientist and um, and I loved that and I probably worked a little bit too hard um, and I really looked up to my um, I really looked up to my A-level biology teacher because I went on to study biology, chemistry and maths at A-level which in the UK are the, the exams that you take to get you into university or college. And my A-level biology teacher gave me a book by someone called Richard Dawkins, and it was called The Selfish Gene. And this was just a few years after it had come out, and it was obviously doing very well at that point. And um, I read this book and somehow just absorbed the view that, that we are just gene machines, that there's just the material uh, and that's all that it means to be a human being and that the purpose for our existence is really in passing on our genetic material to the next generation and our, the important thing is that our genes survive and, and make it also. I mean, it wasn't until I arrived at university that they used to put catchy titles the Christian Union on the stairs going up to the dining hall and I would see these and I'd literally never seen these before I'm like who are these people that ask questions about life because it just hadn't been a feature of my my schooling my upbringing certainly not um, the philosophical questions that that you raised I did have Christians in my life so I, I was part of a youth group um, in my high school years um, that I largely went to because of friendships and romantic interests. Um, and so, um, you know, I was just, you know, happy to be part of this group. And for me, it was ticking a box and maybe, you know, in a funny way, I thought, well, maybe this makes me a more rounded person because I'm, I'm checking the religious box. Here. They were kind of astonished when I called them up a few years later and said that I'd <laughs> become a Christian. So, um, I, in my very first week um, at Bristol University, I uh, they hosted an event called Grilla Christian, which was um, basically four Christians sitting on chairs in a row and a room full of people who were asking them whatever they wanted. Um, and this was an important part of the beginning of my journey that asking questions is okay and kind of Christians that are worth their salt want to try and give responses to people's questions because if something is true it is worth you know it uh it's worth asking questions to find out whether it's true or not so I put up my hand halfway through this evening uh grilling, grilling a Christian um and asked surely you can't believe in God and be a scientist at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I was given the answer that actually, yes, you can. And in saying that um, science is in conflict with belief in God is a bit like saying that the software programs and processes that undergird Instagram is in conflict with the existence of Kevin Systrom, its, its founder and CEO. And of course, those two things are not in conflict. In fact, together, they give a more, a more complete understanding of Instagram. And if you try and science is not in conflict with God, 
it actually expounds upon who God is. It helps us to know more about God and the wonders of this world. So let's continue to see how she became a Christian. And understand that just with reference to the software and the processes, you end up with a diminished understanding. And it's the same with God and science. The mm. study of the mechanisms in the natural world is not in conflict with belief in um, the one who set it all in motion and continues to uphold it today. And I'd never heard anything like this before. And it it really opened up a whole horizon for me of asking more questions and grilling more Christ Christians, which I did <laughs> over the, the subsequent 18 months. I, I spent a lot of time chatting to my, my then friends and flatmates and roommates about the Christian faith. And we would have conversations on our staircase late into the night. And um, I also went to a course where I could ask questions and I probably gave them quite a hard time actually just asking but again it was a key part of my journey that there were places for me to do that and there were people that were willing to listen and sit with me and help me I think your your mind I think your inquisitive mind your desire to know what is true served you very well because it, I, I'm I'm sitting back here thinking there are so many people who just believe a paradigm or you know that that you know science and God they are foes they they are not friends they you know they do not go together either you're scientific or you're religious either you're reasonable and rational or you're deluded and you know that kind of thing and they don't take time like you did to really start asking those kinds of questions. How do they go together? How can I make sense of an integrated view? What kinds of questions were you trying to get answered in terms of how to understand um, the integration or the uh, of, of, of a, a faith-centered view or a God-centered view, which is also grounded in evidence and rationality? But also, you know, this agency mechanism paradigm where there are actually two kinds of sources of knowledge, in a sense, um, that, that can go together in, in a beautiful uh, way. How, how were you kind of moving through this journey? Do you remember any specifics that you were wrestling with? Yeah, so, I mean, a really important one for me at that point was the creation evolution question, because I was studying biochemistry where kind of, you know, certainly molecular evolution was part of our bread and butter, you know, that this was a process that was taken as fairly kind of standard and just happening and we let study it. And, um, and so um you know and again i think i kind of heard somewhere that you know that, that christians believe certain things about about the bible or um and how to kind of reconcile that with with belief in in god and of course recognize that christians hold lots of different views on how they make sense of the opening verses of genesis but first and foremost it's not a scientific textbook um, it's not giving a scientific account. It is giving an account of things that actually happened, but not in a literal scientific way. Um, and in parallel with kind of creation stories that were happening. That's so good. Science is not a foe of God. It is not religion's biggest enemy. No, they are friends. They coincide. They go with each other. The Bible is not supposed to be a scientific textbook. There's no formulas in there. It's a historical book. Trust me, you don't have to believe that it's either or. That's just not true. So if you've been thinking about that and you've been worried about that, just know that science and religion go together. So now I have a Bible verse that will tie all of this together. Colossians 1.15 says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God, 
He existed before everything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we could see and the things that we can, can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. So know that God loves you and he created all things for his purpose. So go to him today. Know that he loves you. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus died on the cross and rose again in three days so that you could be saved. I encourage you to do that today. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and subscribe. In the description below, you could decide to follow Jesus for the first time. I encourage you to do that today. Anyway, also, you might like this video here. Peace.